Hello and a very warm welcome to the SHP Financial Training Seminar on Business Valuation and Financial Modelling. Just to explain who we are, um, my name is Susan Hawkins. I am the CEO and one of the tutors at SHP Financial Training. I have 10 years of professional experience at EY or Ernst & Young, Ernest Youngy in the United Kingdom and in Brazil where I worked in the valuation team. And also I have experience working at the Bank of England in London, uh, which is the UK central bank. I am a CFA charter holder and a member of the CFA Society of Brazil, and I'm also a chartered accountant. I, I qualified with the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Scotland when I was a trainee at Ernst & Young in London. I have also taken some valuation exams that I passed, um, ASA 1 and 2, which are the exams set by the American Society of Appraisers, which is the largest valuation organization in the US. And I have a certificate from the ACCA, which is the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants in International Financial Reporting, or IFRS. My degree is in economics, and I got that from, the Ox uh, from Oxford University. And I am also a developing market specialist for Toastmasters International, which is a public speaking and leadership skills organization. All of our tutors have a, a similar professional experience and experience related to the topics that they teach, and they have passed the exams where they teach for exams, so they pass the exams themselves. We also have a training program which, um, which they go through. And SHP Financial Training is a fairly new company in Brazil. We opened last year. And we are focused on the preparation of professionals for qualifications which are recognized internationally in the financial markets. So, for example, the CFA program and ACCA, which is the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants. And the, as you can see here, with an ACCA registered learning partner, ACCA is actually the large, largest global body of accountants. And they are, for example, very big in China. And their head office is in, in London, and they're just coming into Brazil now. And we're launching the first ever ACCA diploma in accounting and business next year. So we work with the ACCA as their registered learning partner here in Brazil. We also have live online courses. So like you're watching this, this lecture now, we have people participating in a live environment where they are able to interrupt the class and ask questions as we go along. So this is, we have classroom courses combined with a live online option, which is, is quite new. And it works well because it resolves logistical issues in terms of getting to the classroom. So we have people from all over Brazil joining these live online courses. We are also BPP's exclusive partner in Brazil. And for those of you who haven't heard of BPP, it's Europe's leading provider of professional education. It's very big. It's focused on accounting and finance. And I, I studied with them. I did prep courses with them when I was taking my exams to become a, a chartered accountant and also when I was taking the CFA program exams. Our training location is in Sao Paulo in Itain BB on Rua Andre Fernandes. And we also give in-company courses on site at companies and banks. These are just some photos of our training center. And um, so you can see we have a small classroom. Our class sizes are m maximum in the classroom, eight students. And then we have the online students participating as well. And you can see the television there. So the screen is projected onto the television. And this is the same screen that the online students see. And then we also have a, a relaxation area and a reception when you, you come into the building. And there's a kitchen where you can have snacks and drinks. And, and parking on just available on the street. Okay, so our clients, um, we have we've trained students from the following companies or and banks, both in company courses and open courses, and all of our students uh, would recommend us to someone else. So we've trained, as you can see, people from Bloomberg, Bradesco, it's all in alphabetical order, uh, Bungie, Citibank, Goldman Sachs, HSBC, Itaú, JP Morgan, KPMG, Voltrunching, and um, VRG, Linus Arias. 
So if your company is represented in this list and you would like to speak to someone from your company, then please let me know and I can put you into touch, into contact with them. In terms of the training courses we offer then, we have training divided into four main technical areas. We have the, the classroom online and live online courses, as I mentioned before. And we also have training uh, in, in finance, the CFA, accountancy through the, the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants, business valuation, which is what we're talking about today, and financial English, where we focus on the skills that are needed to communicate well in the, the world of finance in English. And just uh, what do we mean by professional qualifications? So we are focused on training people who are wanting to acquire skills and, and abilities that are required or needed in the workplace. So we're looking at learning the, the skills and the knowledge and as well as that, how to apply them. And we also consider ethics, which is more and more important in today's business world. It always has been and it's a particular uh, concern now amongst companies and banks. And just to point out, there are some articles in Napratica that I helped, I contributed to. One is, what is business valuation? And then there's another one, which is, how is a business valuation done? So one is a bit more focused on the types of people that perform business valuations, and then the other is more focused on the, the practical, what is a business valuation on the theory. So the agenda specifically for talking about the course, the business valuation and financial modeling course, we're going to talk briefly about the benefits of studying this course, our learning methodology, the course program, and then we'll close with a Q&A session. So what are the benefits of the course? How, how is the course different? So we have a very practical focus to our course. Most of the learning is done through a hands-on case study, which is a financial model. It looks at projections for one particular company, and then we value that company using the income and market approaches to valuation. You, we also have the, the classes on Saturdays, so that can be easier for people who, who, live, who want to participate in the classroom and live outside Sao Paulo, and also people who are working long hours or studying during the week. So some, for some people, Saturday makes it, having classes on Saturday makes it easier to, to participate in the course. Also, taking this course will show your commitment to your professional development and you'll receive a certificate afterwards, which may help you um, improve your prospects of promotion or maybe even move into a valuation-related job. Also, of course, you will get credibility and recognition by showing your knowledge of valuation and financial modeling. So who is valuation particularly useful for? People working in equity research need to perform valuations of subject companies in order to work out whether they are good investments or not. Investment banking in M&A, equity and debt issuance will need to perform valuations in order to work out the expected outcome of deals where there is a merger or an acquisition and the pricing of debt and equity in when it's been newly issued, for example, it could be a secondary issue. In portfolio management in banks and funds, there is also a requirement to perform valuation to understand the impact of changes in the economy or in the industry that will impact the portfolio and then to make investment decisions based on that. Private equity, so in private equity, the fund needs to select investments. How does it do, do that? It values the, the investment, does projections on the performance and also looks at the capital structure that would be required or could be used to purchase the company and then how that would impact the future value of the company. And remember in private equity, the, the, the aim is to make a, a gain when the company is sold. So there would be a financial model uh, to work out the, the perspective or the projected gain at the, the end when the project terminates. In consultancy, consultants need to understand and suggest strategies for their clients and their knowledge of business valuation may, will help with that in some cases. 
Also in the area of accountancy, finance departments need to make decisions regarding financing and investment. So if they are able to perform project appraisal, they can better understand the different options and which makes sense for the company. They can also make decisions regarding financing based on evaluation analysis. So is it better to get a mixture of debt and raise new capital or more debt? And um, what kind of how that might they structure that capital, for example, in order to, to get a maximum gain for the, the shareholders? Also, we have professional valuation, which is the area that I used to work in at Ernst Young. So this is where we value a business for a client, and it can be for a number of different reasons. It could be for tax reasons, it could be for litigation, for example, in a, a family dispute, or it um, could be if one company is interested in acquiring another company, so that would be M&A related valuation. It can also be valuation for financial reporting, so once a company acquires another company, it, if it has um, has control of that company, it's required to consolidate it onto its balance sheet. So we need to know the value at which it should be consolidated. And then also when I was working at Ernst Young, part of that valuation of acquired companies requires identification and valuation of the intangible assets of the company that are acquired. So that would include brand name, relationships with clients, technology, any patents or copyrights, etc. So student testimonials, this is just from one of our students. Um, he said that the he, he did the course, he, he works in M&A, and he needed more technical knowledge. So the, the course left him, made him feel more confident to perform these technical, the valuation analysis, and will help him, him improve or grow his career in M&A. Okay, so now we've looked at some of the benefits of, of doing a course or this course in business valuation and financial modeling and who it might be suitable for. And now we're going to look a little bit about at our learning methodology. So we, we focus on the three phases. This is based on adult learning theory, which shows how adults learn. And it's been proven that they learn more successfully when they go through these three phases. So we have the, the learning phase when people first come across the information or they first hear the information. And then we have the practice phase where we are using the information and applying it. And then we have consolidation where we review what we have been learning and practicing in order to make it stay in our minds and to reinforce the neural pathways that are created so that we remember the knowledge that we, we've been learning and practicing during the course. So how does that work in terms of the course program? We have three, the course is three days long and we have six classes in total, each for three and a half hours. So the, the first class is focused on theory because it's, students need to know a bit about the theory and they need to go through that learning phase to make sure everyone is at the same level regarding their knowledge before we start in the more practical phase of the course. And we have in our, in our theory class, the first one, we look at the valuation workflow. So when we talk about defining the context of the valuation, we mean what, what are we valuing and why are we valuing it? And what kind of value are we working out? Are we working out a value that includes synergies, for example, or doesn't include synergies? Are we working out the value of a control stake or a minority interest? All of these things will impact the valuation. Then we, the second stage in the valuation workflow is to perform valuation analysis. And here we can value a company, because we're focusing on business valuation, we can value a company using the market income or cost approach. So we will look at what those are. We'll also look at the difference between enterprise and equity value, which relates to what we're actually valuing. Are we valuing the ownership equity interest in the, in the business or are we valuing the entire business? And here we'll look at the differences between free cash flow to the firm and free cash flow to equity, which is the cash flow that is available for the shareholders. Then the third phase is complete reconciliation procedures 
where we will perform valuation using two or more of the three methods, and then we reconcile the value that we we get under the different methods so that we can understand why there are any there are differences between the valuation valuations and this is a, a sense check and it will re improve the re the robustness of our valuation conclusion we can also do reconciliation procedures by looking at the assumptions we've used and see seeing how the value changes when we change the different assumptions and that is called sensitivity testing Okay, and then the final, the fourth stage of the valuation workflow is to conclude on the opinion of value. And here we'll look at what a typical valuation report includes and what caveats we need to include relating to the conclusion of value. Then in the, the second class, we, we start to look at financial modeling. So we talk about what is financial modeling, what do we mean, what does a financial model look like? And then we talk about projections and how a, a company generates cash flow. Projections are very important in valuation under the income approach because we need to project the performance of the company, how much cash it will generate, and bring that back to the present value today in order to value the company. So we need to have a good understanding of how the company generates cash flow. And companies generate cash flow in, for example, by increasing their, their revenues or improving their working capital management. That's a very important influence on cash flow. Um, so we will we will look at that in a bit more detail. And then we we talk about how accounts are constructed, the basics, so that students are able to produce projections of the profit and loss, the balance sheet, and the cash flow as well as the supporting schedules which are needed in order to produce those financial statements. So we need to look at how to project fixed assets and depreciation. And here, one of the very important things that is, is often forgotten about is that you can't have a company which just increases its, uh, its sales forever with no increase in capacity. So we need to make sure that our projections include an increase in capacity according to the increase in, in, um, in sales. And we do that by increasing our fixed assets generally. Okay. Um, then we look at working capital projections, which I mentioned before. Those are very important for the cash, the cash management of the company. And what we usually do is we look at the historical working capital of the company. So how, how, what are the debtor days? How effective is it in collecting the, the cash from its, its customers? what are its inventory days, what are its accounts payable days, and we use that historical performance in order to help us with the, the future projection of working capital. And then we look also at the financing structure of the company. What is the proportion of debt and equity, and how is that projected to change over time? So we, we look at whether the company is generating a positive cash flow or a negative cash flow. If it is generating a negative cash flow, then we need to consider some additional financing for the company, which could be derived from debt or from equity financing. And as we are going through this model and completing it, each student will have their own model and they will be completing it during the class. We will go through the use of Excel best practice and shortcuts. Okay, and that will be the whole of the second day, both classes on that day. And then in the, on the third day, the first class on the third day, which is the fifth class in the whole course, we, we will focus on the calculation of the terminal value. So that is the value at the end of a discrete project, projection period. So we will have a discrete projection period where we calculate the cash flow in each year. And then we end with a terminal value, which represents a, state, a static state for the company. So we can project, for example, sporadic growth with varying growth rates in the in the discrete period projection period but then we have a stable cash flow which can be growing but it usually it will be growing at a constant rate and it can be like a constant rate of just inflation it depends on our outlook for the company and for the market it operates it in um, but that that final cash flow we, there are different methods of calculating it so we look at calculation through multiples um, for example okay 
And then we also focus on how to calculate the discount rate, which is an area that lots of people have questions about. And we calculate a WAC, which is a weighted average cost of capital based on the cost of debt for the company and CAPM, which is how we calculate the cost of equity through the, it's called the capital asset pricing model. So the combination of the cost of debt and the cost of equity weighted by the proportion of debt and equity in the company's capital structure enables us to calculate the WAC or the WOC if you have an American accent. Okay, then on the, in the final class, we'll look at the use of multiples, mostly the PE or the price earnings ratio to calculate value under the market approach to valuation. And then we will complete reconciliation procedures where we compare the value derived using the income approach, approach, which is where we're using the projections of cash flow and the market approach using the multiples. And we will also look at sensitivity testing and scenario testing. So sensitivity testing is where we change one, one input to see the impact on value. And scenario testing is where we look at the worst case or best case scenario or various, any scenario we pick where we change a whole range of assumptions and see the impact on, on the value. And then we have the consolidation part of the course where we do a wrap up and we review everything we have learned during the course. Okay, a note on the course material. So the material is developed by SHP Financial Training and it's based on material or guidance from the American Society of Appraisers, also from the main authors on valuation who are Damodaran, Damodran, Pratt and Grabowski, for example, there are others also. And also we, we look at, we've based the financial modeling part of the course on two, two books, one building financial models and the other is Practical Financial Modeling by Jonathan Swan. Okay, and the first one by John S. Tijer. And then we have also got lots of practical examples throughout the course based on our own practical experience. That's me and the other tutors. Okay, the next dates coming up are the 14th, 21st, and 28th of November. And the course runs from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m with the six classes that you saw in the course program. The location is, is here where I am right now at Tua Andre Fernandez in Itain BB. And you can see the, the course, course fee there and it's payable in monthly installments or with a 3% discount if paid up front. And we are now open for reservations. The, the, the spaces on the course are limited. As you saw, the classroom is quite small. And our closing date for reservations is the 7th of November or until all places are gone. Okay, so we now have time for some questions and answers. And for those who are watching the recording, thank you for your attention. And if you would like to speak with us, we, we're available at info at shptraining.com or you can find our phone number on our website. Also, please like us on Facebook, SHP Training, and follow us on LinkedIn, also SHP Training. Thank you. Bye.